All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Somo for four. So today, guys, we're predicting the Europa Conference League round of 32 games, aka the knock around playoffs. Now, before I begin with this video, I do want to make things clear. This is just my opinion. This is not what I want to happen. Um, and this is just because I'm picking this team doesn't necessarily mean I don't like the other team. It's just I believe this team is going to win. Okay. And so, like I said, guys, please keep that in mind. And like I said, I try to be respectful to all these teams, you know. And, you know, like I said, guys, all these teams qualify to this stage by their own merit. So we need to um, give respect to all the teams, okay? So please keep that in mind. Also, keep in mind that injuries, um, as of the time recording this video, will be told. And, however, if there's any future injuries, I'll not be able to predict that, okay? Anyways, without further ado, let's go and get started. Let's start with the first match, guys. The first match we got here is Bodo Glenn versus Lech Pozan. Now... The time recording this video, guys, Moto Glimt have not been playing a competitive game. They haven't been playing a lot of competitive games since the league restart, and obviously, you know they're coming off the they're coming off the fact that they did lose the league to Mold. They came second place, and they did lose one of their best players last season to Sol uh, Solbalkin to Roma for free. So that's going to be very very bad for them. Now as for Lech Pozan, they're coming into this game with some good form. You know they have played some competitive games. Of course, let me actually go check when was the last time they played a competitive game. Um, Lech Pozan, because I know, um, Bodo Glem, their league's gonna start in March, I think. So, uh, Lech Pozan, let's see. Yeah, they have played a competitive game. They just came off a winning against Midlis Legendica. And some, you know, some crucial players for, um, Lech Pozan, you have to think in consideration is Michael Izjek, Zokris, Zokriski, and Sosa. Now, obviously, we, the Bodo Glem, they still have a lot of quality players. You still have the likes, you know, um, you still have the likes of Pellegrino, that's still good. Vettilson, Burge, and Espered. Um, and you also have players like Saldanez, that's still very, very good for the team. See, the tricky thing with this game is that I think it depends what happens the first leg. I think if Bodo Glim can win the first leg by a huge score and take it and go away to Poland and actually play for a draw, then I think they're in great position. However, if they win the first leg by a very small margin or if Lech Pozan wins or draws, then I think Bodo Glimp's in big trouble. So I think it all depends what happens in the first leg. Because I'm going to say this right now, guys. Bodo Glimp will definitely not win on the road. Uh, Bodo Glimp is not really a good away team. They're more of a home type of team with the artificial pitch. And I think that's going to play into their advantage. And I feel like, for me, as I said, it just depends what happens in the first leg. So I believe Bodo Glimp's actually going to advance on this one. Um, it's a very close one. But I just think that Bodo Glimp, I just feel like, even though they haven't played many competitive games, I do feel as though that they have that attack, their lethal attack that will shine them through. And I feel as though they are going to be able to take the first leg to their advantage, and I think they'll run the score, and I think the second leg will just be a, uh, a um, what's the thing called again, um, consolation, you know, just a friendly, you know. So, but like I said, though, if Lech Pozan gets a draw or wins the game, then it's going to be, then I, th I think I would back Lech Pozan. But, um, as a time recording, I'm backing uh, Bodo Glimt to advance. Okay, next one. The next match we have here is Lazio versus CFR Cluj. Lazio, man. They have some incredible players. You know, obviously, the most notable player is Sergei Milinkovic Savage, and obviously Chiro Mobley, although Chiro Mobley is currently injured as we speak right now. So I don't know if he'll be have I don't know if he'll recover in time for this game. Um, and then obviously, you know, Lazio, they're a great position for Syria with the deduction that happened to Juventus. They're right now battling for top four and it should be interesting to see if they can get that top four um battle of course and you know this is a really really huge challenge for them against cfr kluge now kluge on the other hand you know they still have some great players of course you know their um most notable player of course is none other than of course um um it's simon strofit and obviously andre broca and Mani omrani Kamora. See, the problem with this Kluge team is that they're defensively solid, but their attack is very, very lacking. And I just don't feel like CFR Kluge have ever lived up to expectations ever since they got that draw against Sevilla. Ever since they got those back-to-back -back draws against Sevilla and the Europa League a few seasons ago, and they got eliminated by away goals. They just haven't been the same since then. They have been, they've been very disappointing. And I just feel as though that Lazio, on the other hand, while they have been disappointed as well, because let's face it, they really shouldn't even be in this competition. If we keep things real here, guys, <laughs> if we keep things real. Um, but, you know, regardless, it is what it is. And maybe it's actually better they are in this competition because now they can go to a further, deeper run and potentially win this. Right. 
And so I just think that for me, for um, Lazio in particular, I just feel like for me, they have way too many quality players and they're a team. And they should. And I mean, they should be winning this. That being said, though, if Lazio... The thing is, like, Lazio cannot leave it to the second leg to decide. Because if they leave it to the second leg, as bad as CFR Kluge is, they're more of a home type of team. And CFR Kluge can definitely take advantage of the home field. And so I would say if you're Lazio, you have to win the first leg by a pretty significant margin. So that's the second leg. Even if they do win by off chance, it will not be enough to overturn the deficit. So I'm going to go with Lazio to win, but it's just about. Okay. Well, not, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, but just about, I guess. Next up, it is um, Horbeck versus Gent. This is a big one. Big, big one. And I think the interesting thing with this one is that Horbeck, for me, is one of the most underrated teams in European competitions. This team is underrated as heck. And for me, the, they're a div- difficult team to analyze because they're very, very difficult to play against. They're very difficult to beat. They have some, they have some good players. And while their players are not as well-known as other teams... They still have some great players, you know. And I'm looking at the players like, um, who's it called? You have Mahabri, Zobri, Menzdia, Dikabi, Ozabic, Redan, Jiki. There are some great players in this team. And I just feel as though that this Gen team, as good as they are, I feel like this Gen team has just not been that great. You know, they're fifth in the Belgium League. They just lost the Derby to Genk as the time recorded this video. And I just feel as though. They do have some good players, of course. Um, you know, Hong is, Hong is good. Then obviously Jens, Peter, Hogue is good. Orban is good. Nordi as well. It's just that um, I feel like Korbeck, man. I feel like they're going to do it, man. I just feel like for me, Korbeck are going to do it. And um, I feel like they're going to win. I think the key thing for them, though, as I said, is I said for the other teams that they have to win the home game. And as long as they win the home game, they're going to draw on the road. They're in good position. Because if they don't win the home game, I'd say they're in big trouble. And that's what the th- another thing is. I think their home form is really good. So I'm going to back them to win. Next up is Braga versus Fiorentina. This is a very interesting one. I think this is a very interesting one. And um, this is probably one of the best matches to look out for in the Conference League. I think it's a very, very difficult match to call. Because Braga, for me, is one of the most underrated teams in European competition. Remember, guys, they made it all the way to the Europa League. Uh, quarterfinals, I believe, last season. Only lost to Rangers. They're insane at home as well. They have an insane home record as well. You know, I'm looking at players like Ricardo Horta, Pizzi, Brema, Abel Ruiz. You know, there's some quality players in this team. And I feel like this Braga team is a team you cannot sleep upon. Whereas Fiorentina, on the other hand, they really underperformed for me in the Europa Conference League. They really should have topped the group, in my personal opinion. And right now, they're struggling in Serie A. They're 12th right now as we speak. You know, they're looking at players like Luka Jovic, Amrabat, who was actually supposed to leave um, Fiorentina at this window, but, you know, the president didn't allow that to happen. Then they got Arthur Carvalho as well, Nicolas Gonzalez, um, John Danicone as well, some other notable players. And I just feel like for me, the interesting thing is what's going to happen in Portugal. Because I believe, I'm, I'm more likely to bank Braga to win there than Fiorentina, just because Braga is just so good at home. And you could just never sleep upon Portuguese teams. Portuguese teams are no joke. They always make it difficult. You know, we had two of the three Portuguese teams advance in the Champions League. Benfica and Porto, respectively. So, and they both, um, they both topped the group as well. So, you know, that's very commendable to say the least. And so, you guys know which one I'm backing. I'm going to back Braga for this one, guys. And I think Fiorentina will disappoint in the knockaround playoffs. Next, we have the Sport versus Basel. This is a very interesting one. I think the interesting thing with this one, guys, is that it comes down to um, Travenspoor. Travenspoor, for me, this season, you know, having won the league last season, obviously, they're coming into this one in high. Although, this season, they haven't been able to replicate their form, and they're right now sixth in the league. Although, to be fair, it's difficult to really bounce, you know, do back-to-back, especially with Galatasaray against so many insane players this past summer. You know, it's always going to be difficult. They have some good players like Trezeguet that comes to mind, Mark Batra, that you still have the likes of, you know, uh, Maximiliano Gomez, Hamzik as well, some good players. Vishka as well is good. And the thing with this Basel team is that they're a very well-organized team. You know, the Swiss Super League, they haven't been doing so well in the Super League. They're seventh right now on the table, but they got some good players like Hitz, Kade, Fink, and of course, John Kevin Augustin. My guy, man. <laughs> Mikko Lang as well. 
And I think the thing with this one, guys, is that um, see the thing is with Trap and Spore is that it's very difficult to trust this team because I feel like this um Turkish teams are just really good at home, but when it comes to on the road, they really underperform. And this is the reason why I'm actually going Basel on this one, just because I think the first leg advantage being away in Turkey, they have the second leg at home, they can take that advantage and overturn the deficit. So I'm going to go with Basel on this one, guys. I think Basel will just about do it. Next up is Sheriff versus Partizan. Um, Sheriff, man, this team has fallen off. Ever since, you know, beating Real Madrid in the UEFA Champions League, this team has lost a lot of players. They just haven't been the same um, since then. And they just they just aren't that great anymore. You know, honestly speaking, they're just not that great anymore. You know, their defense is what made them so good. You know, I'm looking at players right now. This team has changed a lot. There's not a lot of recognizable players. You have Mohamed Diop, Admin, Abulora. Doesn't, uh, these players have completely changed. It's not, recon it's, not, it's not recognizable to the Champions League team. You know, Till and those kind of guys are gone. Partizan, man. Partizan is a very good team. You know, right now, I believe they're second in the um, the Serbian Super League. Yep, they're second right now in the league. And, you know, they're fighting for Red Star Belgrade for the top spot. You have some good players like, you know, I'm looking at Hamadou Traore, Pavlovic, Andrada, Diabate. And yeah, I just I just think Partizan is just gonna win. To be honest, I think Partizan is gonna win. I just think Sheriff from here just they've regr they've lost too many players, man, over the last couple of years, and I, I just don't think they're good enough. To be honest with you. All right, next we have it is um, A Kalernica versus Dinner Pro One. Now this is an interesting one. I think the thing with this one is that this is a very difficult one. I think this is one of the more evenly matched ones because. AK Lernica, for me, they were great in this um, they were great in the Europa League. You know, they were able to compete head to head, you know, and they even got third place in a group that was pretty difficult to be fair. You know, with the likes, you know, I think was a Dynamo Kiev was in the group. And then obviously I think um Farin Bache, and I think you had Renz in there as well. So, you know, I'm looking at players like Pirich has been good, Nikolic, Leds, Lopez. And I feel like this Dinnerboat team is very underrated. This dinner pro team has been amazing. You know, they're top of the they're top of the Ukrainian league right now as we speak, which is incredible. Over the likes of Shakhtar and Dinamo Kiev, which is very commendable. And although the players are not as well known as the other Ukrainian clubs, they still have some good players. Like I'm looking at Dobik, and then obviously Herma, Hamache, Nezuroko. So it's a difficult, difficult one to call, but I am actually gonna go with Dinner Pro, guys. I think Dinner Pro is gonna do this. I think will be this will be one of the few upsets of the round, and I just been really impressed with this team. So and I think this team will be difficult to beat in Ukraine, of course. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Next we have it is I believe this is the last one we have is Ludogretz versus Anderlecht. Now Ludogretz for me, they were great in the Europa League. Honestly, they almost advanced, you know, they were able to give a good game against Roma and Roma. Just had to grind out the game by the skin of their teeth, having that penalty, other than scoring those late goals, seal it in. So Ludogorets, man, it's a team you cannot underestimate. That being said, though, they haven't be they haven't played a competitive game for some time now, so that could be a hindrance for them, and that you know they may not have the match sharpness, so to speak. Um, and yeah, as I said, man, they got some good players like Noata, Despo, Pipa, Diago, some good players there. And like for me, man, they have been amazing. They have a they haven't been that great in the Belgian league. To be completely honest with you, they haven't been great, you know. Um, but they have been good in the Europa Conference League, you know. I'm looking at players like Vertonghen, Slomeni, Dewari, Debas, Dia. And so, I'm actually going with um, Anderlecht for, to win this one. Yes, they haven't been great in the Belgian League, but I do believe they're going to come into the life in the Conference League. And I think the home leg is second is actually going to really help them. And plus, they have played a lot more competitive games than Ludogratz. So, I'm going to go with Anderlecht to advance. So this is the recap of the teams that I have to advance to the um, Europa Conference League quarterfinals. So let's quickly go through this real quickly. Um, let me just write this down real quick. So we got Bodo Glimt, Lazio, Braga, Basel, Partizan, Dinner Pro 1, Anderlecht, and Quarterback. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. I want you to know what you guys think in the comments section below your predictions. If you're new on your considering that subscribe button, like this video if you did enjoy. Make sure you guys comment down below your thoughts in the comments below. Check out any other pops in the description below. And of course, consider hitting that join button to get access to members' videos and member streams. And yeah, I think that's going to be it for today. And I hope you guys do enjoy. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.